Can you fix a pool with a 3D printer? All right, so here's the deal. Before we, uh, well, many, many years ago, before we ever left our job and are doing this full time, I put in an above ground pool and put a deck around it. So we have fun, our family reunion that we have every year and just relax in it. And it's above ground pool, nothing fancy, but it's great and I love it. Well, last year, uh, before we left, uh, we had a big freeze come, and even though I winterized it, I forgot to drain one section of the pumping system, and what we got is a shattered pipe. Now, you might be thinking this is standard PVC, and you would be wrong in your thinking, because it's not, because I already tried that, but what we need to do, that pipe ran between these two things, and it's the only part that's broke, and I just need to have a new one. So what I did is I popped it, I took the measurements uh, as best I could and uh, popped it into SolidWorks, came up with a model. I did one test, where is it at? Here it is. I did one test with different end caps to try to solve this problem. This one seems to work the best. This one right here doesn't, a little too tight. So what I did is I created a pipe using these dimensions which again, I used calipers and just took measurements here. And uh, we're going to see if the 3D printer can print a pool pipe so that we don't have to spend the money to buy. They do, I looked, before I did all this, I looked to see if I could just buy this part and sadly you can't, which really sucks. If you wanted to fix this and buy a part, it would be about $400. And we're going to try to see if we can't get the 3D printer to make this part uh, and put it all together. Let me show you where the print is currently at. First thing you might notice is that I got LED lights now inside, which really make for a better, oops, better view. There we go. So this still has quite a few hours to go on it. And uh, then obviously we got to put it all together, test it, see if it works. This is going to be pretty much a, if it fits, put it in place, probably use some glue to hold it in place, maybe a little bit of cement glue uh, and turn it on. And that's going to be the way that we test it. The biggest challenge that we have is making sure that pipe is watertight. And the way that I designed uh, this particular pipe, essentially, is it's double walled. Uh, so when you 3D print, it lays down extrusions, you know, layers, each layer, and those layers adhere to each other, and that is a watertight bond. But as it goes horizontally, it does infill, and that infill can be watertight or it may not be watertight. What I've done is an inner layer, which is solid, and it's about a quarter or an eighth of an inch thick. Then there's a uh, gap, which is infill. And then there is another outer uh, rung that is quarter inch, or eighth inch, excuse me, eighth inch thick as well. It is also solid. So this thing should be watertight and it should be more than strong enough for the amount of pressure that this thing is gonna be putting through there. Should be easy squeezy, but we'll find out and it's gonna be interesting to see. Well, it has been hours and hours and hours and the printer just finished. what appears to be a really nice looking pipe. Got this particular filament has an oozing problem and just a problem in general, but this particular print location and settings, I can get it to do what I want. So there's some oozing in there. See the fuzzies? We'll have to clean those out first. Well, unfortunately, I put this assembly back together, and as I did that, I realized that I took my measurement from the wrong location. This wasn't on here when I measured, which means my section here is not set up for this particular spot. It's set up for the one that's inside of it. Now, this one here, though, that fits just like it's supposed to. So that's great news. And that pinches down at the bottom. So that fits just perfect. 
That's nice. Boy, this can work. So now we have to make a decision about this guy. Looks, since we're modifying this thing, looks like we could remove some pieces of this and make it work for our purposes, if it fits below. And it does fit right there, like it's supposed to. Let's go check the fit. This is for the sand filter, if you're not familiar with the setup. There we go. So this whole thing is supposed to go down there. And it looks like we're a little tall. A little tall. All that waiting for a mismeasurement. So we gotta redo it anyway. Hmm, how can we use this? And I hate to hate to waste. Let's get a measurement on that thing first. Alright, here we go. We are about an inch, one inch. An inch on that side inch yeah one inch off oh man so close i cut off a section here and if you want to know how strong this stuff is it is strong this is a club <laughs> anyway so i put it on the grinder i ground through a little too far but it allowed me to figure out what we're going to do we're going to go here with it uh, so now i have the proper measurements i unfortunately i can't i can't recover this piece uh, I really wish I could. So we're gonna put that in there with its updated measurements. This goes in there. And then this whole thing gets uh, pinched in place. And there's a bracket that goes around here that cinches it all together. I don't think we're gonna have any problem with water uh, coming out of this. This is, this is watertight. And because I'm going around the outside and then I have a pipe going up the inside and down, all the water should flow that way. And any leakage that we get, if it happens at all, which I doubt, uh, it could, because water is always leaky. <laughs> um, it should be minimal for what we need to do, and it should hardly impact the flow rate. So, uh, what that means is we need to re-upload the code. So, a little click and click. And uh, we're going to have to wait until tomorrow. But hopefully, this thing, it says it's going to take... 11 hours, so there's a good chance that unless something goes wrong tonight, uh, I should be able to wake up tomorrow and we'll have a new one of these. That's a pretty nice custom pipe there. I'm pretty happy with that. And like I said, I put three little dings on it and that's it. You guys can see that. Hard to, it's hard to see. There they are. So, See you guys in the morning. That's looking good. Overnight print complete with no errors apparently. Temperature is a little high I think when I'm printing in that particular location. That turned out nice. Time to do the fit check. Okay, step one. This is the big change. Oh, like a glove. Oh, like a glove until that point. Oh, it tapers. Well, you little snitch. It tapers. It tapers. I think what we'll do there, we'll just cut it off. That's what we'll do. We'll just cut it off so it fits in there. And then the other side should fit just fine because we didn't change it at all. There we go. Yeah, so get a marker. Got to make sure we do the right cut here. So it can take all the way up to that point. So we got to cut this much off. All right. I have a cutoff wheel right here. I used it yesterday when I was messing around with the other piece. Why is that moving so much? I shouldn't do that. Let's take that up. Okay. There we go. And uh, the reason this is better is because that melts the plastic pretty quickly. There we go. That is watertight. So when you're doing 3D prints uh, with PLA, a lot of folks will tell you it's not watertight. 
And that's absolutely true uh, when you're looking at a horizontal flat surface uh, where it's not a wall. This, when you're doing a pipe, this is actually a double walled uh, pipe is the way this ends up working. So it's actually watertight throughout because that's where the, uh, it's where the seam is made. It's where the seal is made. It's all uh, melts into each other. This particular filament has been giving me fits, just fits. So uh, I started doing a whole bunch of prints with it, testing different retraction settings, different temperature settings. I just cannot get it to print consistently. I've talked to the manufacturer and we got everything figured out that we could. I'm impressed we even got this out of it, but it still gets I think it might be a little bit hot with these particular settings, so I get some oozing, and that is just not the world's straightest cut there. But it'll probably work. Back into the clean side. There we are. That fit in there nicely. That fit in there nicely. Where's my big thing? There it is. Oh, that's certainly a good sign. And this sits right on top of that. It's the exact same setup that they had before, actually. Their pipe just slides right up into there. There we go, look at that, huh? That should work. That should definitely work. This is exciting. That's all fitting in there just like it's supposed to. Uh, so now what we need to do is take this out and uh, get it reinstalled. Got to get sand in it, put it all back together, put the clamp on, and uh, basically hook it up and go. <laughs> so, I'm excited to see if this works, guys. I, I, so, I was telling you, you know, the reason I'm doing this is to get, you, you can't buy that part that I was looking at, and it's not standard plastic pipe. It's not standard PVC. Uh, it doesn't fit. It would cost 400 bucks to get a new one of these. And we're trying not to spend money. So uh, being able to spend, you know, 15 bucks on plastic, uh, it's definitely way better than 400 bucks. Plus it, it's cool to be able to do this and it makes great YouTube content. So can you fix a pool with a 3D printer? Seems like a good title. All right, let's get out, put this thing in, see what happens. Here we go. We got air in there, so it's cavitating right now. But you can see stuff is starting to move. It's dirty, of course, but hey, that's okay. Starting to get pressure. There may not be enough water yet in the pool. I'm kind of aggressive here. But you can see it moving. That's great. It always starts off a little cloudy. You got a bunch of stuff in there. It's got to blow through and change and all that. Just got more water put in it. It's been a few hours. Looks like we're almost there. You can see there's just not enough water coming in yet, but it's close. The good news is the water's getting a lot clearer here. And what were what the problem was before is there was sand in all this. Oh, there it goes. It just hit. All right, we're working. That's so awesome. Well, I'm totally stoked. This is freaking awesome. It's, it's about 85 Fahrenheit out already. It's gonna get up in the 90s today, I'd imagine. Uh, so getting this thing up and running is great. I'm super excited about it. And uh, working on my suntan here, getting rid of my farmer tan, trying to get an actual tan. This is cool. 3D printing rocks, man. We'll see how long this thing lasts. I imagine it's gonna last quite a while since it's so thick compared to the original one. PLA is hydrophobic, so it uh, sucks up water. But once it gets waterlogged, who cares? Uh, I don't think it's gonna break down at all, but we'll find out. The worst that can happen is that we'll just get a bunch of sand blowing in the pool again, like what we had before with the broken pipe. So this is great news. I'm so excited to have this thing up and operational again. 
Now we just gotta clean the pool. All right, it's running. I'm so excited. I just got done vacuuming the pool. It took me quite a few hours and like uh, 15 or 20 backwashes. Uh, you can see it's really green right now. And that's because we stirred up a lot of algae in there. But the uh, sand and everything that the old pump, or the broken pump, I should say, the broken filter, allowed to go out. This one sucked it all up now that it's repaired. So it sucked all up the, <laughs> blah, 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 blah. it sucked up all the sand that the broken filter spit out into the pool. It cleaned everything. Uh, lots of backwashing though, because there's so much algae in it from over winter. This last winter, I super chlorinated it and that worked great. It stayed clear all winter long. And then as the weather has in, uh, improved now and it's gotten warmer, we had some algae that got to the bottom of it, but nothing like as bad as, you know, the green muck pool. So yeah, this is our above ground. I built the deck, redneck pool. Well, I am so grateful for the printer. I've actually, that, that tube was actually served two purposes. One, I needed to get it fixed for the pool, which is now running, which means there's a little sweet loaf uh, in our neighborhood who is really excited about the pool. So in a few days, once we get all the pond and scum and all that stuff out of there, now the filter is going to just be a few days. Uh, she will have a beautiful place to go swimming. So I'm very excited for that, as well as for my nephew, uh, Matthew, who has been very excited about it. And we also have some other friends who have kids who, of course, when it's hot, if they're anything like my sister and I, you want to be in a pool. It's just fun. So that's one purpose. Another purpose will actually be testing the printer because with this black filament right here, it's from uh, Food Safe. 3D filaments by filaments.ca, uh, true uh, food safe PLA. And uh, I've had nothing but problems with this particular filament. It has been horrendous to print with. I have the exact same roll of white and it's working just fine. The uh, folks at Modix have been nothing but supportive of me as I've gone through this process of trying to troubleshoot the filament. And we got it down to basically there's a quality issue with the filament. Base, what's happening is it'll stop halfway through a print or a quarter way or different places all the time and it'll start grinding the filament. Now, when you have grinding of filament, usually that means it's not feeding correctly or something's holding it up. Um, there's a clog in the nozzle, but my nozzle's not clogged. We rebuilt the entire front end with all brand new parts, had the exact same problem as soon as we turned it back on. I've put a, um, oh my goodness, I was, bearing I put a bearing on the feed uh, this was the original feed system you put your uh, do I have an empty one here yeah uh, you just put your spool on there like this and it spins well I replaced this with a bearing based system uh, so that removed all that friction and then we also put a much larger boat in tube in uh, and the white prints just fine but the black will not print worth a darn I, I and I'm not sure why so we think there's something to do with quality. It's a little tacky, it's shiny um, compared to the white. So who knows what's going on? I see bandits at the door, I gotta let him in. Come on, big dog. No idea why it's doing what it's doing. Uh, right now I have the printer going to print actually another tube uh, so I can mount it to the wall here and actually put the white large spool on so I don't have to keep re-spooling everything. I've been using my uh, DeWalt and re-spooling uh, manually. And that's no fun. Oh, there's my ruler. I don't know where that was. Figure that out. All right. So uh, I got to print one more of those, and then we're going to get away from this black, figure out, hopefully get our money back for it, but it's, it's horrendous. Uh, we got to figure out something else. And the black was needed so that we don't get algae in the system. We really wanted to have black uh, filament, so uh, we'll have to figure out a different supplier, I think. So the pool's running, the 3D printer's doing its thing. Thank you so much for following along. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe. Don't forget you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and on Instagram. And if you like what we're doing and want to support the mission, you can do so through Patreon. In the meantime, everybody, this is The Real Martian. Stay safe. Out.